Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask, so I'll tell you. The exception meaning of angels messenger and the exception meaning of destiny is to make firm established. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels, the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Lorraine Prescott. But before that, I would like to say thank you for watching this show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, um, get clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angelic reiki, hypnosis, angel cards, to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. Um, and to help them if they're at a crossroads in their life that they need to heal their past, create their future and transform their present. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation, ranger card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests like today's guest, Lorraine Prescott, who will be sharing her own interesting story of how she got from A to B, which wasn't a straight path. And that we thought if we all followed a straight path, how boring our life would be. Now, Lorraine is a well-being practitioner with over 18 years experience of helping people gain clarity on the health and well-being journey and working with them to get them from their A to B. Now, well-being can take many forms and it is often combined approach which achieves the best results, holistic in her approach and working with clients in a truly holistic way. Health and well-being has always been a passion of Lorraine's and continues to this day. She works with people utilizing hands-on therapies, energy therapies, talking therapies, and movement therapies. Lorraine is the founder of The Healing Tree and co-founder of Club Chi, and truly feels blessed to be able to work with clients who connect to the importance of keeping themselves healthy and happy. With testimonials such as, I wanted to say a massive thank you for helping me these past 12 months. Your support has made a huge difference in helping me through my teacher training. I'm pleased to have made it to a point where I can be more independent and self-confident in my teaching role. And I went to see Lorraine for life coaching when I was struggling to find balance in my life. Lorraine helped me to explore my purpose and ideas for achieving it. She then supported me to create an action plan and build my confidence to make some major changes in my life. I have not looked back since and have achieved even more than I could ever imagined. Lorraine is calm, supportive and listens and I would recommend working with her. So, without further delay, hello Lorraine and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm very well, thanks Ray. It's lovely to be here, so thanks very much for, in for inviting me. Ah, you're welcome. So, before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Lorraine and I want you to be part of this conversation, so please do not be shy. So, Lorraine, why don't you tell us about your journey and how life would be boring if we followed a straight path? Well, it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> that's only because that sort of feels like where my journey's been like the past 18 years and some. So but I, I wanted to sort of start with um, a quote that I actually um, came up against or came, found out about the other day, which was that purpose always out wrestles pain. And it really sort of like resonated a chord. And it's not so much that um, like we were saying, Ray, you know, that sort of like, you know, I've experienced massive trauma and, and that, but sometimes we can feel either stuck, disillusioned, um, frustrated, sort of like, you know, that, that point of giving up. But there's sometimes that inner drive that will keep us going. And that, I think, is that's that purpose. And it's that, that, you know, once we get that, either that clarity on that goal and it's aligned with what we're here to do, that things happen and there becomes either that synchronicity or where we talk about coincidences, you know, things were meant to be. And, yeah, you know, I've... I've basically sort of since I was a teen, I've always been fascinated with, with nature, um, trees, um, alternative medicine. And when I look back and like, I remember at school sort of wanting to be self-employed. Nobody in my family self-employed, didn't know where that came from, but it felt like a thing of like, I don't want to be beholden to what somebody else is telling me to do. I need to find my own way. So that was always a strong, um, feeling for want of a better word because it wasn't it didn't resonate I didn't have any idea what I wanted to do and then when I look back at like books that I used to read you know like I had books on 
aromatherapy and Alexander technique and zone therapy and acupressure, you know, and so I'd be, you know, reading and dream books, you know, I'm fascinated about dreams, you know, and it's, there's always that, that bigger picture, you know, and I think that always had that feeling that there's more out there and there's more than just us or there's more than what my life could be if I just you know followed say in my mum's footpath you know and, and you know not as though there's anything wrong with that but you know I felt that there was more there was more that I needed to do and yeah you know despite that and despite that feeling um things not working out quite as they they should have done sort of like with A-levels and um so like leaving just like with like me a, a English A-level and then thinking I still don't know what I want to do so what am I going to do? So I then went to college and like, you know, admittedly it's partly I'll go to college so then I won't have to work so I can still have like my lay-ins and stuff. And then, and even then like my first job was part-time. So I was then like, yeah, you know, I can still go out sort of like watch bands and all of that, still have like my social life. And I think it was like, you know, it's partly that, but it was partly what, what do I want to do? I, I didn't know, you know, when I was at school, I wanted to work with animals and I, I would have gone down, I think the zoology route but then I wasn't able to do those A-levels. And mm. so, you know, you're like, oh, things have unraveled. So, okay, I'll just trundle along on this path. And so fell into like secretarial jobs, you know, and knowing sort of like, you know, working, I think, and that's where I think whatever role we do, I think if we um, can gain skills and knowledge from what we're doing, whatever that may be, it doesn't feel like a waste of time. Also, I think sort of the people that we work with, you know, if we work with a nice bunch of people or we manage to sort of get on with them and appreciate them for the skills that they bring to the table, again, it makes for an easier ride than if we're going in with that feeling of like resentment, a feeling of not wanting to be there, which, you know, we all get with yeah. jobs where we don't feel it's what we, we should be doing. But if we are able to flip that, you know, well, what do I get from this? You know, and for years I'd be like having a mantra of going through my head of um you know sort of that you know I feel awake alert and on the ball like in my head in my eyes in my body today's going to be a productive day today's a good day because sometimes especially when I was working in London I just wasn't feeling it you know and it would be that almost like sort of that trudge you know and so yeah you are getting to that how can I feel the positives of this but you know going back to sort of then um yeah, the, the secretarial jobs. And it, it was weird. Like I said, this inner feeling or inner knowing. Um, additionally, I had like a feeling of um, something around like when I was 26. So say when I was about 15, I used to think, oh, at 26, you know, random number at 26, I'll be married and, and we'll have kids. And then as that got nearer, I'm then like, oh, no, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not ready for that. Don't even, even know if like kids are going to be my thing. And and they haven't been, you know, and, and I'm absolutely fine with that. Um, but, yeah, it's, you know, strange that I sort of like knew that there there was something at, at that age that was going to be, um, you know, during the job sort of like um, leading up sort of to that age, um, you know, there's stressful periods at, at, in the job and to the point where, that stress becomes chronic stress and ended up, you know, like that sort of um, spastic colon sort of IBS sort of for, you know, the pain that I'd, I'd be in, um, you know, would be unbearable. And it, it took a while to make that connection. that It was actually the stress that I wasn't being mindful, really. I wasn't in the zone like when I was eating. So I'm just, you know, chomping down yeah. on some food as you're working, you know, and all of that, your body's trying to tell you, give you the signs, isn't it, that things aren't right. Then um, probably a few years after that, um, I then ended up sort of getting constant tonsillitis to the point that my tonsils just wouldn't go down and, and they were huge. And um, I was on antibiotics for God, probably about nine months constantly. Wow. Yeah, you know, and again, it was that sort of like knowing that – you know, what effect is this having on my body? And after like my tonsils were eventually taken out, it took me, um, I'd say probably about a year to to get that inner strength again, to be able to, um, I'd be going swimming and I'd notice just that weakness there. You know, my, my immune system had been hit so hard by this that 
you know, I knew it, I had to be kind to myself. I knew I had to build myself up gradually. And so even to this day, you know, if things get too stressful, I'm now more um, aware of the signs. I'm now more aware that right, I need to stop because it will be this like a lethargy that will hit you sort of like out of nowhere. Um, another thing I had like bizarrely um, like years ago was some connection um with kent and i didn't again didn't know what that was because i was i'm from hertfordshire then i was living in bedfordshire before i actually moved down here and you know and again didn't know what it was but there was some something some some like knowing and again you put it to the back of the back yeah. of the mind don't you and carry on and yeah you know and i think sort of like throughout this time so i was sort of you know working in like i said in secretarial sort of like pa jobs then thought there's got to be something more and I need to try and explore what that is. So I did a course on um, finding work that you love and we explored different themes and, and repetitions of things that came up and ones which which were were animals, like nature, music um, and alternative therapy. And I got a book out of the library on alternative therapy and it was like reflexology shot off the page and it was like, this is it this is what I'm doing and it was as clear as day it was just this again this knowing this alignment and found a course so it's like right I'm, I'm doing this so put my heart and soul into it you know loved the study it was full on and I was working full time as you know so many people do when you're trying to make that transition aren't you um yeah so loved just that learning you know and that that and feeling like yes this is it this is this something b bigger you know there's something like these these practices that have been going on for thousands of years that this knowledge is i think within us all and it's just that we've often switched ourselves off to it mm. and after the reflexology i think it was reiki was the next thing i studied and i was gonna say almost sort of like inadvertently i used to give um my dog at the time he was epileptic and you know he'd have sort of seizures and i found myself like one one night he had a seizure and i found myself just placing my hands over him saw this triangle and he suddenly like leapt up and it was just like you know what's going on like he doesn't normally like do this and not thinking anything of it not knowing what it was about until i then studied reiki and i'm like oh another piece of the jigsaw you know and again that you know that feeling and that knowing that you know I studied Reiki for the fact of being able to deliver it as a therapy, but I, I strongly believe it's something that we, we've all got that we can all yeah. do. And it's it's whether we're in that right space, it's whether we're open to it. You know, we all appreciate the therapeutic touch, don't we? And it's it's a, a deeper, stronger connection for that. I mean, you you know about it, Ray, you know, and it's you know, it's that energy, it's that energy that's around us if we mm. if we want to to tune into it. And yeah, you know, and so going from there, sort of like, so now I had sort of like the reflexology and, and the Reiki. I'd studied a couple of other things sort of then along the way. At the time, my, my business was called Mind, Body and Soul, like S-O-L-E, because predominantly yeah. it was reflexology. Um, and yeah, you know, and so that was sort of like working well. I wasn't really practicing Reiki that much after studying it. And weirdly, it took me... I'd say about three years after studying before I either found that confidence to be able to deliver it. Um, I think also, sort of as we were touching upon earlier, that with the Reiki master who taught me, told me it was my last life. And so I think that was more of that, oh, you know, like sort of yeah. dealing with that, not as I was practically dealing with it, but it over it overshadowed, yeah. I think, the, the Reiki training. Um, yeah, and so, so so that was at that point. And then, because when I said about the 26, it was when I was 26, I knew, you know, by then I didn't want to be married, you know, or at that point, sort of anyway, didn't want kids at that point. But at 26, I was seeing like my boyfriend at the time, we, we bought a house together and I was 26 when we moved in together. And again, you know, when things, big things for that happen for a reason, you know, I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say the relationship was the best, but I believe there was a reason we were together. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think, I can't even think how long we were together. It, in the house, it didn't really feel that long, but we ended up splitting up. And although the 
how upset I was at the time. It felt like I was kicked in the stomach, but knowing, and again, it was that inner knowing that this is for the best. Mm -hmm. And literally sort of like, as we were going through like that breakup, almost seeing a light of now I can live the life that I want to lead. And it was such a strong thing that, you know, in that mixed emotion of that upset was, you know, this is the next part. This is the next part of your like of your journey, and so that was where then I moved from um, from St Albans to to Luton, and so sort of went so then over from Hearts to Beds. So my business had to you know had to wind that up, reset it up sort of in, in Bedfordshire, and again I just sort of thought, oh, it will just pick up, you know, pick up where it where it's meant to. It's it's fine, um, and it didn't. You know, and you're just sort of like, oh, okay. So I then ended up, um, I dropped down a day at work. So I had to go back up to full time, get into that point of, you know what, this is such hard work. You know, I love what I do and I'd love to be able to be doing this, but let's call it a day. It's it's not meant to be. And almost at that point of doing that, the phone rang and it was somebody wanting to book in and it's sort of like, okay, okay like there's a sign there and then almost like needing that double affirmation was then a leaflet dropped through the door again completely random a leaflet dropped through the door about excuse me about emotional freedom technique and it was something I wanted to to study and I sort of thought well again you know how how weird's this that this has got to be like a sign so studied that you know went went sort of like down that route as well and so I'm adding sort of all these tools to sort of like my, my therapy kit bag so to speak but you know, it was a, it was again, it was still that knowing that um, you know by then I was I was working in London at a different firm, living in Luton, seeing clients then when I'd get home from work. So the sort of like the the days were sort of you know sort of quite long, sort of quite full on. But doing the the work with the clients gave me that energy. It's sort yeah. of like almost you know you're working with them to get them into that better space. But I was getting something from it as well. So it yeah. was never that again that resentment of you know oh you know I haven't got time for this oh don't I haven't got the energy you're in the zone and, and you love doing what you do don't you you know it's you're there um yeah you know and it was it was almost like following on from there that and I can't remember then like the 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 uh way it formulated but the mind body and soul wasn't was no longer resonating yeah and it was almost just like this you know, my therapies, I've got more therapies. I need, it needs to sort of change its name. Love my trees. And so it's almost just like this. And, you know, when I go out for walks and I take pictures of trees and I could just see this tree. And so it's like the healing tree. This is it. And again, just feeling like this, that alignment, you know, that you get yeah. that inner, almost that like tingling, don't you? You know, that excitement. And so I sort of thought, right, this is it. I'm now, this is that, that next step, you know, and sort of you know throughout like the move and the way the breakup happened and all of that you know the stress is along with that but still that sort of keeping going you know that although there's other stuff all going on around you and at the side you're still you know you've still got that that line that direction yeah and it was then it was after um it was after sort of probably if sort of going fast forward a little bit so it's after I had to say goodbye to my dog who was 17 bless him when when he when he passed but you know I used to give him reiki and you know he he'd love it and um I went to a mind body and spirit festival and I was just sort of like walking around you know there's so much there isn't there to see and do. Yeah. You, you know you, you love it and um this man literally stepped out from this store and he went oh excuse me he goes I've got to give you this and I went okay and it was a bag and in it was a magazine and a couple of flyers. But in the magazine was an article um, by Liz Whiter, who is the Healing Animal Organisation. I know Liz. Yes. And, and it was almost like it was a course that I'd looked into. Then thought sort of like, you know, no, I needed more time after saying goodbye to Ben. So didn't do anything with it at the time. But this then, given this magazine, was again like this sign of, this is now the time. This is now the time for you to do that. So I then thought, right, this is the next part of my journey. It's now I'm going to start working with animals as well. So I um, ended up sort of doing the, the animal healing diploma, then the equine diploma. And 
again, there's a really beautiful moment about where this synchronicity and this alignment. Um, and I was out on a bike ride and just stopped um, for a little bit of a breather. And there's these horses down in like the field at the bottom, sitting there like with my eyes shut, just tuning in, I think, to the course that I'd be doing and what I'd be getting from it and how it made me feel. And then I opened my eyes and all the horses had come right up to the fence, almost like their wow. heads like hanging over, that they'd picked up on this energy, you know, and it was so, um, so amazing and such a, a, a confirmation, that affirmation again, you know, that yeah. right, this, this is, this is it, this is that next part. And again, such a lovely feeling that that connection absolutely love doing the the healing diplomas um you know and a, again it it built upon um like my reiki it built upon um my understanding with like energy healing and 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 i think each layer of, of studying you do adds that extra depth doesn't yeah. it as well and yeah and so it was um then after doing like the the diplomas it was then working like with with um, some of the animals. I think it was during the case studies actually. Um, that yes, it was because it was one that gorgeous. Again, you know, working with animals that they don't question. Do they? They either want yeah. the energy, need the healing, or they don't. And if they don't, they let you know that they don't. You know. And I remember doing um, going out to see one lady, and it was it was her thoroughbred that I was seeing. And um, we're in the stable and the stable doors open and in shoots this little Shetland pony. And she's like calling after it, sort of like, Rocky, Rocky, like come on out. I went, no, no, he's fine if he wants to be here. And he just stood at a distance as I was giving sort of like the healing to this horse with his eyes shut, completely still. As soon as I brought the healing to a, to a close, off he went. And, and afterwards, the, the lady said she was like, oh, he's actually um, a rescue Shetland. And um, she goes, I've, he's now with me, but the owner before rescued him and he used to be beaten and yeah. she used to do Reiki with him. So he knew that he tuned into that energy before it even started. And that is where, you know, again, that affirmation and, and confirmation of that bigger picture, you know, we're all energy, we're mm. all connected and it's how we use that energy. And so, yeah, so now I was sort of like working with, uh, still working in London, working with animals, working with people, um, you know, loving like that side of the business, still knowing that, you know, the, the job in London wasn't what I wanted to be doing. Yeah. And um, yeah, it, again, you know, things happening for that reason, you know, I'd, I'd sort of like move firms and I was working at a, a new firm in London and it was so full on, so full on, sort of like stressful that I'd almost feel like these out of body experiences as I was sitting there, you know, that this isn't what I'm meant to be doing and looking down on myself at doing this job, sort of sitting at the computer. Mm. And but things happening for, for a reason being that that, yeah, that I, I was meant to be there. I was meant to have this pay the bills stability job because it was then like, you know, fasting forward sort of like got quite a few years you know I'd I was you know enjoying life um working in London doing my therapy stuff sort of going out with friends and I, I was in a place of feeling um like a hundred percent happy with who I was where I was and and it, it it was it was lovely and just sort of like prior to that the work had been um, I'd basically been offered a um, a, a role at a, a drug and alcohol clinic providing um, as a counselling service. And I was um, hired to provide reflexology and back massages. Mm. And again, that privilege to be able to offer therapies to people who had never been able to access them, you know, who had yeah. turned to other means to be able to get that relaxation you know, and where, you know, a few of them when I'd, I'd sort of be doing reflexology or the massage and they'd, you know, they'd be like, oh, my God, you know, it, it feels like they're taking something else, you know. And it's sort of like, yes, you know, so proof you don't need that. You know, you've got it within you. You can get it. And the lead up to um, being able to start that job was was really stressful and it really called into being knowing what. I wanted to do and the lengths that I I would to, to be able to do it 
And that role, to be able to take the role on, I needed to be able to go part time. Mm. And it was sort of agreed and then taken back. And then I will agree it, but we'll call you back, say, in a year. And the stress that, that was causing and, you know, feeling again, I think that that feeling of this is why I want to be my own boss, because I can yeah. make my own decisions. And um, they did agree to me going part time, but there were like conditions to it. Mm. So I thought, right, I'll, I'll play the game because this works for me for the moment. Um, and like I said, you know, outside of that, I'd sort of then sort of started the role felt completely 100% happy with like where I was, who I was, you know, I was single. And, you know, and that was my point of that, where, where that happiness was. It was, I was, you know, yeah. where, I, where I needed to be. And um, I was invited to a, um, a book launch and me and my friend went and had a good night. And, you know, that was the end of that, of that night and invited to another book launch by the, the same author um via sort of my friend who was doing the publishing mm. and went sort of this night sort of that we went this this chap came walking up and um his name is Ian who he's from Kent and he's my hubby <laughs> and and just the thing of like the weirdness like synchronicities is that um he'd written a book um and the main character in the book was called Loz and he didn't know anybody called Loz. And my friends often called me Loz. Uh -huh. And, you know, and, and in his book also, he made reference to Luton, which was where I was living at the time. And it was just sort of a, a strange sort of set of coincidences or synchronicities. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and, and after we sort of started dating, you know, and I said to him, it's strange. I said, always I've had this thing about Kent, never knowing why or or what it was. And then down the line we saw some photos from his his first book launch um or the one the first one i went to and there's a photo of us and we're standing back to back but we never met that night wow it's you know and so it was, it was very strange but you know coming back to then sort of like the um the, the purpose of the date pay the bills job was that if i didn't have that job there i don't think i would have moved to kent because I would have had to have wound my business up yet again yes, without having any security, you know, any other financial security. And so it was, it was a, it was a, you know, again, having it sort of like it's, it's moments, but um, being able to sort of then have that, that flow sort of like that step-by-step -step, sort of like that we were then able to, you know, I wound my business up yet again, you know, which again was then sad to do because by that point I'd had sort of like, you know, my, my, um, you know, my case of clients, um, you know, loved them all to bits as I do my clients now, you know, and it's in, and, and, but you're just like, but it's my next yeah. path. It's my next step. So yeah, moved down to Kent. Um, and again, synchronicities, it was then, um, I think I've been down here about a year, I think it was. And again, talking to sort of like colleagues at work who um, they were then sort of like looking for like other jobs and they they sort of like, you'll, you'll be next, you'll be next. And I said, I think it's going to be a year. Don't know why. It, almost a year to when I said it, sort of it was like in the July, I was then offered an opportunity of a room share and talking it over with Ian. And I said, you know, if I do that, it means I'm going to have to leave the job in London. And he sort of said, you know, well, you know, do it, take that, take that chance. And in amongst all of this, um, because when I moved down to Kent, I was then still working in London, obviously. And that was yeah. then three days a week. I was then still working in Luton at this drug and alcohol clinic. Yeah. So I was then staying at a friend's up in Stevenage. So there was so much and still seeing clients here. So there was so much juggling. And then again you know i didn't want to make that decision of leaving the drug and alcohol counseling service as it then happened they got merged they got taken over and they were merging with five other organizations so the result of that merger was they were no longer having complementary therapies yeah so as upsetting as that was for the manager and like for myself it was almost like this inner oh thank god yeah. i haven't had to make that decision myself you know so it was it was really nice so that ended up sort of like coming to a natural conclusion. I then ended up stepping away from the London job, 
taking out this this room share and yeah you know and again that that feeling of you know I'm nervous I don't know how this is going to work out but it feels like the right thing to do mm. you know and so it was then I think um after that so it's then sort of you know resetting up the business after in that that first year as well of of um stepping away from the London job we were actually planning our wedding as well so I was doing that as well as rebuilding the business and then when I think about it, it I mean it's insane I then decided to um to study Mauritio massage which was equine and canine Mauritio massage so it's a it's a soft tissue um uh, and mobilization right. so it's soft tissue and deep tissue massage and mobilization techniques and yeah you know crazy I, I signed up to do both diplomas at the same time because I could do the course dates <laughs> and never minded that we were still in the business of planning the wedding we were still I was still in the business uh, I was still in the throes of building up my business so I ended up taking all the course notes on our honeymoon <laughs> sit, sitting on like one of like the the um like the sunbeds thinking oh my god what was I doing what was I thinking <laughs> you know but doing it you know and sort of thinking like well I started this there's there's that purpose for it you know and and just cracking on with it um yeah you know and so it was it's was almost just this you know I find sort of myself being drawn into things and things might be a you know a massive challenge in terms of either managing my time or managing my energy but feeling that there's there's more to it beyond that. And I've just got to get to, to that point beyond that. And when I think about, um, again, like with the life coaching, like a few years before, that um, I was talking to a friend about it and I sort of said, I found this really good course that, you know, I want to do. She'd looked into it and said, oh yeah, this looks really good. So she'd signed up to do it. As a result of her talking to um, the over, the um, founder of the course mm. um about me doing equine healing she had a horse who wasn't well and and we were put in touch so i ended up doing some distant healing on her horse and um as a result of that when it came to the point of me doing the life coaching she then gave me a really nice discount for doing the thing so again that you know yeah. by giving you receive something back in return but you you're giving because you want to you're giving yeah. because you know there's that you're yeah because you're you're seeing sort of that it's something you want to do you're driven to do and it's never for, from that per point of gain is it it's that purpose that life purpose and yeah so um you know it, it's almost just that you know building the business sort of like three times and knowing sort of that you know there there will probably be another business rebuild at some point you know that if we were to sort of like move away we always have like visions of like Cornwall mm -hmm. and you know but again there's still something like Cornwall and Kent you know and so however that looks you know but it's almost just that being open to um what life I was gonna say throws at you but it doesn't throw what life presents to you yeah. you know and that how you react to it you know and so it's that that thing of like you know there's been plenty of times sort of like throughout my life either um you know through when friends or family have like sort of like passed away or sort of you know sort of um when work gets sort of like really stressful when you don't look after your health as a result of that when you know but it's it's how you sort of then tune to choose to regroup into yourself and how you yeah. choose to sort of like look within and sort of like knowing sort of like trusting that you're you you know the answers you know and i think like i said it's that if you're making your decisions from that point of it you know if it feels aligned sometimes if if a decision's not meant to be it will be almost like brick walls like constantly yeah. you know and it's either we have to find a different way around and tweak it or it just needs to be it's a different path that we should be on and there's probably loads of signs that are there and it's whether or not we choose to see them yeah, and you've obviously chosen to see them as you've gone along on, it, on your journey. Exactly, exactly. You know, and I think, you know, in even in this situation, you know, I don't think any of us predicted this, you know, this COVID sort of like happening and, and how it's affected all of us in one way, shape or form. But again, it's like, what can we gain from this? 
you know, sort of the, there's plenty of things that we can't do or plenty of things that are different. But if we were to look at what can we do, you know, where where are the blessings? Where is, you know, what are we enjoying about this time? You know, what yeah. are we grateful for? And I think that that throughout any of the, the you know, the struggles, the, the where things feel like, I'm, you know, sort of like wading through sort of treacle, it's almost that, you know, where what are my blessings what you know every day I will at the end of the day list a minimum of 10 things that I've been grateful for today you know and however small they are and in the morning I will always do my affirmations I will always say you know the the, the positives and again what I'm grateful for what I want the day to be you know and how I'm feeling and I that's yeah. a biggie isn't it you know if, if we build up and believe what we can achieve often we will then start seeing sort of like the signs we'll be, we're more open to it, aren't we? Exactly. You know? And then it's actually noticing the signs and taking notice of them because Ev, because we're all, we're given, we're being given signs all the time. Exactly. It's just most of the time we're just sort of like, look, you know, looking from one thing to the next without actually looking at the sidelines as to what might actually be coming in. Exactly. You know, and that sort of, you know, in that way, like, you know, wrapping this up sort of that this was my point in that, you know, if life was a straight road, we probably wouldn't see everything sort of like around us because we'd be going so fast through it where it always sort of reminds me of when we'd go and see my nan or my nan and granddad. And always we had a choice of routes. We'd have the country way or we'd have like the motorway and always sort of like my mum would ask sort of say or my dad, you know, which way should we go home? And we invariably, me and my brother would say, let's go the country way because it would be pretty. It would take longer, yeah. but it would be scenic, you know? And I think it's that, it's that, you know, that if we go through life at top not speed and we don't sort of find our blessings, we don't appreciate what's around us and we don't learn and grow from what we deal with on the journey that, we can miss so much so it's almost just taking that time to to enjoy this stillness if this is what we're experiencing at the moment to you know appreciate the year for what it is in amongst you know sort of like some people experiencing sadness and the loss undoubtedly but yeah. you know that still just that thing of like you know that there's if we follow sort of our path if we follow sort of like that purpose if we if we believe in ourselves and the gratitudes and the blessings that things will be revealed to us that will move us on which will get us to to be living our, our life with a purpose and yeah. yeah and that's you know basically what I wanted to say that you know life lots of bendy roads but it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a hardship if we have that right perspective yeah it makes abs absolute sense and it, you know it's been brilliant listening to sort of like the different turns that you've ended up taking yeah um, on it and things you you've ended up doing that you never actually thought initially you were going to do but because you were open to the possibilities and what was coming in which is something that a lot of people um you know do find difficulty in is is having their arms open ready to accept what co what comes in it's not all all straight and narrow what you're what your parents did, what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, you, you, you know, you've got to be open to, to what other paths are there for you. Yeah. And it's that, isn't it? You know, and I think that, that inner knowing it's that following your heart, like you said, often we can be dictated to, can't we, by either what school tells us to do, what our peers do, what our parents want us to do or believe we should do or that we feel that we have to follow in their footsteps but you know we're all individuals and we're all on our own individual journey as well as a collective journey and yeah. it's almost just that you know to, to follow our dreams and if it is in alignment and it's for for the the greater good things will happen you know and things and it, again like we we're saying it, it might not be straightforward but sometimes sort of like we then appreciate things more when we have had to work hard for things, when we have had to uh, persevere sometimes, you know, and it becomes almost that, you know, it, it reconfirms what we want to be doing. Yeah, yeah, it makes absolute, makes absolute sense. You know, ev everything you said, you know, you, you've been on that journey, you've been on, on that path that, that people can sort of like, oh, okay, maybe I could take that path. Or maybe I could do that or, 
or, or, or do this as, as as they go along. Yeah. So 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 yeah, it's it's been absolutely it's been absolutely fascinating you, you sharing your journey. Um, no, uh, along the way and then of course it's kind of like the fact you know Liz I know Liz um, yes yeah and and that um and I'll chat about I'll chat about how I know Liz afterwards um because okay. I've, I've not done like equine healing I've nothing to do with with the um, equine healing at all um but but yeah Liz Liz is absolutely um a lovely lady um so um I take it you still work with animals Yes, yeah, you know, and and again, sort of like bizarrely, again, how life takes a bit of a turn in that I did the Mauritia diplomas and then it just felt like not the right time to, to not the right time to sort of like not do it, but to market myself. So I felt that things needed to take a different turn first. And then actually the, that different turn was that we then studied Tai Chi Qigong. So that has been now our next step, you know, and so it's bringing that that movement therapy into the other therapies I do. So this is then and this is a journey that me and Ian have been doing together. Mm. Um, and again, you know, from a from a, um, a manifestation, I used to be doing like this mantra as I'd be walking to the station going to London and it would be sort of, you know, thanking for like my therapy business, thanking for the work that I do in London and that, you know, the skills I have, but also thanking for me and Ian working together mm. and although we weren't and I didn't know how it would have unfolded through his line of work and he's, he's like a musician he writes books he works with like sort of social services and I thought how is this going to combine yeah and then an opportunity arose and we ended up studying Tai Chi together and that's when we've then sort of launched Club Chi you know and so so we're now, and you know, again, it's not until you're down that path. And I, I said to him, like, you know, probably a couple of months ago, I went, oh, so do you realise I said that we've achieved this this manifestation, you know, because you're, you're just on the journey, aren't you? You know, and, and that felt like that was then, although um, the Mauritio is like, well, oh God, I've, I've invested all this time. I've got to do something with it. But it didn't feel quite the right time for me yeah you know and I've bought the skills and again the knowledge into other areas of of my work but this is the next part is the club chi and then yeah. I think the animals will will come again you know when when it feels when I feel ready to do so you know yeah. but working with with animals is like I said I love it because they don't question you know they and the energy especially from horses is is unbelievable it's yeah. you know, it's fascinating yeah. Well, then, of course, the, the thing is with with what's going on with COVID-19 at the moment, if you think about it, with the Tai Chi, you can technically do social distancing. Exactly. And when you're working with the animals, you can't do that social distancing. Yes. Yeah. You know, and, and obviously sort of again, you know, and it's that I think it's that then feeling grateful for when things you know, where perspective, you know, where you see in the positives, because if we hadn't studied Tai Chi when we did, when this happened, the healing tree, you know, suddenly was then sort of, you know, the rug was pulled out from under me. Yeah. So the focus has then been very much, well, let's, you know, Club Chi can move online, holding the sessions like via Zoom, which we are, then following on from that, the healing tree is now online. But obviously yeah. I can't work hands on with people. But, yeah. you know, the coaching, meditations, you know, the movement therapies, it all combines but then that became the focus was the online sessions with Club Chi. So again, you know, you're just like, oh, you know, this may be awful and what an awful situation we're going through, but the blessings to be found within it are these, you know, that yeah. we're still able to connect with people. We're still able to sort of help people with their well-being in this in this sense, you know, which is what we've been doing. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and, and that's what, you know, a lot of people have been doing, you know, they're they're actually more in contact with people online than they than they ever were when they weren't online. Exactly, exactly. And again, you know, if if things to be grateful for, the technology. Yeah. You know, if we didn't have this technology, I think so many more people would feel isolated. Which, you know, again, the the club chi element is very much. You know, we we describe it as like like a club chi family. You know, we want to bring that connection. You know, like I do um with the healing tree but everything you know I work one-to-one -one with people then yeah. but I still have that very strong connection with each and every one of my clients you know but Club Chi 
it's then you know especially with zoom you know i like to have everything open so people can all say hello to each other at first before we start the session because some people if they're having to isolate that's that's their connection with other people yeah yes uh, yes absolutely absolutely brilliant so thank you so much for sharing so now as you know i do guide to meditation and angel card readings and each week i like to ask my guest um or they would like me to do a mini guide to meditation or pull an angel card for themselves and those watching so lorraine what would you like me to do i think because i do have an absolute fascination with angel cards so could you do a reading for myself and, and everyone out there please right yeah, i can indeed um funny enough i've always got my cards by me <laughs> and they're not quite angel cards they're um Funny enough, sacred traveller cards. But, uh, oh, nice, nice. When the th the theme has been about the journey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the show basically is about the journey. Hence why we use these cards. So, yes. what is? And of course, um, for those um, that haven't seen me before, when I do the cards, I don't actually um, pull the cards to predict the future. Um, because I believe that everything is in the present. So when I do the cards, it's for what you need to know for your highest good in the present, which may sound contradictory as I do past life regression and I work with the past, but I work with the past so that we can um, clear stuff to be fully present. And I work with the future so that when you know what your future is, you're not worrying about it, so you can be fully in the present. Yes. So I work, So even Makes though I sense. do work past and future, I am actually working in the present. So what does Lorraine and everyone who's watching this live or the replay need to know for their highest good at this moment in time okay that one wanted to come out i like it when that happens <laughs> you know so my cards always do that it's very rare that i have to actually and it's actually a pretty good card because it really ties in with what we've been talking about <laughs> which is in the flow everything is smooth sailing Love that. I love that. Um, so so Perfect. there you go. So you know, so so there so there you go, you know. Um for Lorraine everyone watching, you know, everything is flowing as it is at the moment, and you just need to go with the flow. Yes. Um, you know, it is smooth selling. Don't start looking for anything that's going to interrupt because you don't need to. It yeah. is just just going forward now and just Go with it. Um, don't fight against it. Just go with it and keep and keep following it, um, which is kind of like what we've we've been through the whole show, and it's just really confirmation um, for for that for you. Yeah, which is yeah. lovely. And again, you just get that inner tingling, don't you? You know, it's almost just that they're they're, they're tuning in. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. You know. You know. They're 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 always there, um, wandering about us. So, Lorraine, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers with? I think just leading on from from the card reading and like we've been saying, Ray, is is that is that being in the present, you can't worry about then the past or the future. So you you're reducing that that state of anxiety and you're just tuning in with yourself. Like, how am I feeling right now? Where am I right now? And what is going well for me right now? You know, however small it may be, however trivial it may seem, it's still that positive. And from that can create that change, that chemical change to for us to then be open to seeing more positives, to then change our physiological energy. So then we start sort of, you know, feeling better about ourselves. We start seeing more. We start seeing the beauty in things. And it becomes that that flow. I was going to say almost like that that snowball, but it becomes that flow and we start flowing down that river without fighting that tide and trying to go upstream. Yeah, brilliant. Wonderful words. Thank you so, so much. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed this and you found it insightful and the words of wisdom Lorraine has given you will help you further on your journey. So Lorraine, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? So they can connect with me um, via the healing tree. So that's um, the healing tree at yahoo.co.uk mm -hmm. um, or um, and the website is www.healingtree um, healing oh my god I forgot my thing healingtreetherapy.net um, and also mobile number is 07790385809 and the details are all on the website additionally with Club Chi uh, the website for that is www.club-chi.co.uk 
and again contact details are on there and people can find out about the sessions that we're running brilliant and what i do is i'll post them uh, um, in the comments after the show anyway so that everyone um, can just click on the link and go straight go sh and go straight to um to it lovely so, so so brilliant thank you lorraine so so if, if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Please reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call where we can find out more about each other and how I can help you on your journey. And of course, the Angel Wings membership community is now open where you get the chance to work with Ascended Masters, Archangels and Oracle cards to spread your wings and soar by becoming a founding member. And of course, if you want to sign up to a weekly newsletter on my website, you get a free guided relaxation, relaxation meditation and some other free gifts. So thank you everyone so much for watching. And I would like to invite you to share this video out as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And I look forward to seeing you all next week where my guest will be um, Jess Bubico. So I look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. Lorraine, again, thank you so much for being here on the show. Thank you, Ray. And I'll see everyone soon. Bye.